So thank you, Mirabel, uh, for, for your presentation. Thank you also for giving me the, the opportunity uh, to discuss uh, the paper. Uh, it uh, was very interesting. It's, for me, it was coming more from a, a theoretical background. It's very refreshing to, 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 to see work with you know, very precise micro data because you have the feeling that you are actually talking about real things happening on the ground. So you, know, you have a sense of, uh, of, a, of, a, of a strong empirical relevance of, of the work. Uh, I'll, you know, just give a quick summary of the paper. At least my understanding. I have some question about the methodology and, uh, and the results. And in particular, I'll try to emphasize two points. Maybe the work, the connection of your work, uh, or potential application, what you're doing to, you know, more ex ante policy assessment done with general equilibrium model, and you know, some question about, uh, you know, the, the dynamic perspective uh, on network. Right. So. Uh, indeed, so once again, this very, you know, uh, granular data on the Belgian production network was very interesting and we've seen in, in a number of papers during the conference. And here you match it with uh, also very granular data that exists on uh, the EU ETS market because all the firms and their emissions are registered in, in, in public databases. So you can have to identify the, the, the identity of the, the um, of the firms and the amount of their emission and so on and so forth. And you use that in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a very innovative way by looking, you know, how, how a shock, okay, a carbon price shock could potentially propagate through this uh, production network. So surprising result is that you don't really find a pass through, I mean, the most, uh, intuitive effect, in a sense, is not really there in the data. This, this idea that you could, uh, the, 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 there's a, a price effect or a cost effect, and it seems that you see more things happening on, on the structure of, of the network. So, you know, uh, yeah, it would, I'll try to to, to 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 dig a bit deeper into those questions uh, uh, with you um, um, in order to, to try to see uh, if we can if we can get a better understanding of you know where this is coming from and in a sense where this is. Uh, leading. So there are, you know, maybe a few technicalities that could be related to that. So, for example, if I understand correctly, you know, you use participation versus non-participation as a as a, as a characteristic of the the presence of the firm in the ETS. You don't really look at the amount of emission of this kind of thing, which might there might be still a, a quantitative effect on on um, on this that you know might uh, if you include it, might be you you see more uh, you know, direct impact of uh, the participation um, of the ETS, right? Um, then, you know, if I uh, kind maybe of over-interpret, you know, the, the, the set of, of results you, you presented, you know, well, you know, there are possible uh, stories. Maybe there's a story about things in Belgium, being, because there, are, there is some literature about cost past well, in other settings you, you find it, right? So maybe there's a question about, you know, something specific to Belgium, or maybe, you know, if, you know, in a sense, when I see all the pieces of what you've done together, it, it sounds a bit like, you know, like one scenario is in a sense that there was some already anticipation almost from the, from the, the downstream side, so that the network was structured in such a way that you couldn't pass the cost through, basically, uh, or this type of effect, right? So this, in, this, you know, in small, you know, again, at looking at, uh, you know, really in depth, what's, um, what's uh, the evolution of the structure of the network. So you looked a bit at these issues by looking at, you know, upstream, downstream behavior, but, you know, there are, you know, you can, you have broader indicators of the structure of, of the network um, coming from network theory, you know, looking at the, the distribution, the evolution also possibly of the centrality of this firm. Um, uh, in the in the ETS um, sector, uh, to see how important they were before the before the the introduction of the market, is this as this importance decreased from a, a structural point of view uh, over time? So maybe there are you know you know ways to put forward um, more quantitatively uh, some uh, some aspects of of, of structural uh, change. Um, one. Other um, dimension, which I think is uh, very interesting and quite connected to, to uh, what you have been doing, is um, you know the connection to the 
there is a wide range of you know, ex-ante policy evaluation of carbon market based on computable general equilibrium models, right? Which, in a sense, ask a similar question to yours, which is what's the impact of uh, climate policy or carbon pricing on, uh, the, broader, uh, on the broader economy? Uh, there is, that's also very interesting work that's been done. There is substantial work. I mean, for this general equilibrium literature, I think environmental policy assessment is, is the most important topic. Uh, and there is a lot of good work going there, but there are also weakness, and an important weakness of this literature is that there is, in my view, very little va uh, validation of the model, right? Or ex post uh, validation of the model. Uh, it's so what you the, with the, the type of data and the type of analysis you, you you've made you can really benchmark you know the the projection of these models to what's actually happening on the ground so I think that would be quite a service to uh, you know uh, the community and also policymakers using these models to know okay what do we see in the data in terms of, uh, you know, propagation of effects and general equilibrium effects, if you put it in this, in this wording, versus, you know, uh, where do the models stand in this, uh, in, this, uh, in this setting? Of course, you can only do Belgium, but then this uh, often there's also the European scale, but I think that's quite, um, that's quite relevant uh, already. Right. And, um, and yes, and the last point, it's more, uh, you know, dear to, uh, to, to my heart in terms of, um, you know, uh, current uh, research interest. Uh, I think you are, you know, really at, uh, when you look at this kind of problems with uh, micro level network data, you're really at the, at the core of what's, you know, the current uh, restructuring of uh, the European economy or, you know, the economies in structural change in economies driven by the low carbon uh, transition and this really is let's say the the, the best possible uh, case case study or example of uh, our experiment for you know uh, the literature that's emerging about the dynamics of production network uh, and so and here you have you know in particular a lot of drivers for the evolution that you can capture. You have price, you have also this data on innovation. So, you know, I think it would be quite interesting to try to, because you consider a fixed network as far as I understand. So if, you know, to extend the work in trying to understand uh, already, you know, if we are trying to, you know, there's a number of policy questions about, you know, redistribution, uh, structural changes, transition that, e that inch to a certain extent on, how um, industrial activities and economic activities in Europe are going to be reorganized. So if you can already you know, point us to the direction where uh, this will be uh, leading, I think that, 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 would, be, that would be a great, um, great uh, contribution on top of what you have already done. And uh, I think that's was, you know, mostly the points I wanted to cover. So thank you once again, and um, I really enjoyed it.